Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas. Today, let's talk about how recording works inside of Studio One. Okay, you've got Studio One installed. You have a microphone plugged into your audio interface, ready to go. Mine's plugged into channel three. Just file that away. What next? Well, first of all, let's start on the start page and make sure that our audio interface is here. A lot of times, uh, when you first open Studio One, you'll it'll just default to the built-in output on your computer, as in like the little headphone jack. That's not what we want to use. We want to use our audio interface. So click on this and just come change the, it'll be playback and recording device, just change the playback device to your audio interface. For me, that's a Persona Studio Live 24. Make both of these the same, okay? All right, we got that there, then let's check, let's leave that, that sounds good. All right, let's create a new song. I'm gonna create a blank project called, blank project, we'll call it song, because it's not technically a project in Studio One. Wah-boink. All right, blank, love it. Let's create a track. So we're gonna hit T, which brings up our create track. We'll call this vocal, and we'll go ahead and make some selections here. I will assign it to input three, and I will hit okay. All right, great. Now we have a vocal track. Now, if you recall from my overview of a couple of the different overview videos that I've done, this is the record enable button, this is the monitor enable button. When I hit the record enable button, we can now see that there is a level here. Now there's a setting inside of Studio One, audio input, I always forget where it is. All right, <laughs> I've been sitting here for like two minutes. It's right there, monitoring follows record. You have the option to turn that on to where whenever I record enable a track, it also does the monitoring. For whatever reason, my main output was set to channels 25 and 26. That's from a long time, time ago. ago. Okay. okay, now, now it's, coming it's coming out the, the proper, proper outputs, outputs. But, but what, what is, is the problem? problem? We've got a delay. That's called latency. Um, if you're wondering why you go to record and, and you, you hear, hear it, it like, like that, that is because your computer is processing the audio, the combination of your audio interface itself, and then the computer and the processing and how you have things set up is set to maximize processing to minimize things like dropouts. But in this scenario, that's not gonna work super well for us. So there's a couple of options inside of Studio One. Uh, one is to go into your settings and mess with the buffer size. So if we go to our settings, come to audio setup, audio device, we can see here, we have this device block size. I've talked about this before. If we bring it down to something like 64 samples, that's gonna say, process this audio a lot quicker. And we can actually see the latency, 3.6 on the input, 3.3 on the output, that's a total of around six or seven, right? Now, if we come over here to processing, we can also go a little bit further and we can say there's dropout protection enabled. Now, dropout protection means if we set it to maximum, then the signal will never drop out, meaning it, it, there's gonna be enough processing on hand to handle everything. Um, however, sometimes that can be it can be tricky if we bring it down to minimum, maybe we'll get a really low latency, but we might have some dropouts because we're forcing the computer to work too hard. A lot of it has to do with just the how fast your computer is. Uh, the other thing to note is down here, monitoring latencies. This is really what we care about. At medium, with the, with the device block set to 64 samples and then the dropout protection set to medium, I can see normally I'll be getting 38 milliseconds of latency, which isn't great, but then in low latency mode, which I'll talk about in a second, I get 8.29 milliseconds. That's not bad at all. If I go down to low, it changes the standard, but the low latency mode kind of stays the same. Low latency mode is pretty much, um, it's always at eight. So I can bring this up to like maximum, so I don't have any dropouts. My normal latency is gonna be really long. It's not gonna be usable, but my low latency mode will still be 8.29 milliseconds, which isn't too bad. If I wanna make it even faster, I can try processing at 32 samples, which now we can see our round trip latency is 6.29. Anything under 10 tends to be pretty good. So let's stick with that and see how that works. All right, I'm gonna hit record and let's see what it sounds like. Testing, Testing one, two, three. three. Testing, Testing one, two, three. three. 
So right now you're hearing my voice through my microphone that's going through the board. That's what you're listening to right at this moment. And then you can hear there's, there's still, still this, this huge latency. latency. This is where people get confused. They say, wait, I went and adjusted my buffer size down to 32 samples and there's still a crap load of latency. What's the deal? Well, Studio One gives you basically two modes for monitoring. Standard mode, which is what you're going to use for everything you do except for recording. It's going to give your, your computer plenty of room to handle the processing. But this low latency mode flips the way Studio One works just while you're recording without having to come in here and adjust these buffers all the time. How does that work? It's this little Z looking symbol down here on your main output. See how it says enable low latency. When I click on that, a couple of things happen. First of all, if there are any plugins in the chain that's causing some additional latency, it bypasses those. So that's handy. And then it's giving us that low latency number that we saw before. So now when I speak and turn the mic on, we should be hearing around a six millisecond latency versus what we had before, which was over a hundred and wasn't usable. Let's test out that theory now. Check one, two, check one, two. That is completely usable. That is something I can absolutely record to. Now, one thing to keep in mind is your interface will play a role in the latency you have. If you have an interface that allows you to get low latency monitoring on the interface itself, then you'll set it up like this. You'll have the record enable button, but you won't be monitoring. You'll be listening elsewhere. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm hearing my voice on the mixer itself, and I'm also recording my voice into the computer. That's why I love using a mixer because there's no latency settings at all. I just use it. However, if you have a normal USB or Thunderbolt interface that you're going straight into Studio One, the way I've been showing you is the way that you're gonna use the system to get a, as low latency as you can. One key point, the Quantum series of interfaces from Personas, they have ridiculously low latency. So if you have a Thunderbolt 2 or some Thunderbolt 3 input on your computer, those Quantum interfaces actually essentially make it to where even at 128 samples, I'm still getting really low latency. So if your computer isn't handling your standard USB audio interface, a Thunderbolt interface is a lot faster and you can run a higher block size and still get low latency because of the way we built the driver to go so fast in and back out without needing any third-party software. All right, so that's, sorry, that, I didn't mean for that to go quite as long as it did, but that's important. That's kind of one of the common questions folks give us, especially when they're new to recording. All right, so let's say we're ready to record. And I'm going to turn off that monitoring for now just so I don't confuse myself. Uh, a couple of things about the way recording works in Studio One. Uh, your buttons are down here for transport. You can press record and it will start recording. If you're like me and you have a small keyboard that doesn't have a number pad, the default recording keyboard shortcut is something like the number three on the number pad or something like that. Well, I don't have any keyboards with number pads that I use. I used a smaller keyboard, similar to what's on a MacBook Pro. I used a small wireless. So the first thing I did when I started using Studio One is I came over into the keyboard shortcut window and I changed the record keyboard shortcut to this forward slash key. Uh, and you can change that, it's super easy. I can remove that shortcut and save it. I can come in here, I can type record. Oh, there it is, transport record, that's the one. Let me enter a keyboard shortcut. Boom, assign that, great, let's go. And it's as simple as that. So now when I press that key, it starts recording. Real quick, let's talk about metering. Right now, this is as loud as I would ever want the meters to go in your system. If it hangs out around halfway up and to like three quarters of the way up, you're great. You get no bonus points for trying to get it to be as high as possible. The only thing that happens is you might potentially clip. A couple of cool things of the way recording works inside of Studio One. Be sure to check out my NAM presentation that I posted about a month ago to see some cool extra functionality with regard to punching in and things like that. But this record button is super magical. I can start hitting play. It starts recording. And let's say I want to punch in this section. I sang a vocal, I want to punch that part in. I just have to press record whenever I want it to punch in and then press record again to stop. It starts recording. And now I'm punching in a super sick middle part. Pause before you wouldn't get, oh, I messed that up. Let's hit undo and try again. It starts recording. And now I'm punching in that part. I know in some DAWs before you would, what's really cool about Studio One, it automatically crossfades both of those ends. So it will sound nice and smooth when you play it back. It starts recording. And now I'm punching in that part. I know in some DAWs before you would, and if the breath noise makes for a little awkward transition, we can just drag that one way or the other like that, and it should sound better. Punching in that part. I know it's, okay, we'll talk about editing in the next video. A uh, couple of more things. If you want to record multiple takes of the vocal, you can do that. 
simply open up your inspector window over here on the left hand side come to layers while the track selected hit add layer you'll see that disappeared i'll show you where it went in just a second and now i'm recording whoops i hit record twice and now i'm recording take two i've stopped recording now i'm recording again i stopped recording and i can even record like that by tapping the button over and over that's not super helpful, but it's kind of fun. And not in even. <laughs> okay, that's going to go on my next record. Now I can come over here and I can go back to layer one or I can go to layer two. So I can see all my different takes. Well, let's say I want to see them all on one page. I can do that by clicking here. Oops, clicking here. And now I can see by zooming out, this is layer one, this is layer two. If I add a third layer, I can see the third layer here and layer one and layer two are down here. I'll talk more about that in, uh, in the editing video, but that is available and super handy if you like to record in different, uh, different takes and things like that. Now let's talk about a couple of cool functions that you, if you're used to recording, you'll want to know how to do these. The first is pre-roll. Let's say I want to come in right here, but I want two bars of intro. Look down here in the bottom. There's a couple of buttons you want to be familiar with. This is the pre-roll and this is the auto punch. Keyboard shortcuts O and I. So if I press O, <clears throat> I've now engaged pre-roll. If I come over here to the metronome settings, I can actually say how long my pre-roll is. I usually use two bars, okay? So let's say I want to punch in right here. I can select there as long as I've pressed O and we can see that this is lit up down here. So pre-roll is on. I hit record and now I'm punching in that part. I know in some DAWs before you wouldn't and now I'm punching in that part here. Yeah. See what happened? It went back two bars, and we're showing you um, seconds, but you can see it in bars. It went back exactly two bars, played two bars prior, and then started punching me in. So instead of having to do that on my own, I can tell the singer, hey, let's get that second line. You got two bars before that. Okay, I hit it record. Recording. I hit record, it jumps back, and it doesn't record until it gets to this point. Super cool. Let's say you're recording yourself and it's a guitar solo and you're not, you want to just punch in a certain section like this section here. Um, and then you don't want to keep recording. You just want to punch in a section and you're playing the guitar so you can't punch it in. Well, if you don't have a foot controller that allows you to do that with your feet, which is hard to do anyway, you'll want auto punch mode. So I flip over to that or the keyboard shortcut for that is I. By the way, O and I alternate between the two. You can be in one or the other. Then all that does is I select the section with using my loop points. So this is my looper. If I hit uh, forward slash, it becomes turns my loop on and off. I don't want to do that. I just want to select the section. Now I just back it up. I hit record, and it's going to start right where I'm, right where the locator is right now. And then when it gets to here, it will automatically punch that section in, and it'll automatically stop recording at the end. Here's what that looks like. I'm back here. I hit record, and now I'm punching in that part. Punch in, punch in. Or you wouldn't get the immediate punched it in automatically for me. It's a great way to do that if you don't have the hands free to manually do it yourself. One other thing I forgot to mention, if you create a track and you go to set your inputs and you don't see anything here under the inputs, either here or in the mixer window when you go look for your inputs, click on this little button here. It's right there waiting for you, audio IO setup. And what you'll see is maybe this grid will be blank. Um, that happens sometimes with new interfaces the first time you're setting it up. All you have to do is just add a mono or stereo input like this and it added one at the very bottom and then I just select what channel of my interface that is so this is channel three I can click right there and then I hit apply and now I've got my input available so let's call this mic okay now when I hit apply and okay when I come over here to this I can search and look there's an input called mic and I can see that it's channel three we select it oh look there it is wonderful that's one thing that some folks miss out on is they don't have inputs set up or they don't have their output on their main channel set up or it's going to nothing for some reason uh, those are the two other things i would troubleshoot to make sure you're off to the races all right there's your crash course and how to do recording inside of studio one as you can imagine there's a lot more depth available here you can do lots of really cool complex and creative things but this should be enough to get you rolling and recording thanks for watching if you like this video be sure to comment and subscribe like the video do the thing thanks for watching see you in the next one